sessions I will be teaching in a classroom and a student will be doing something in a way that's not exactly the way that we're supposed to be doing it and I'll kind of tease them, oh look, you're making your own unique variation of this. Well, sometimes that's not teasing. Sometimes what they're doing um, will turn out to be a whole new project or a new you know, piece of a project that is valid in its own right. And uh, so that's actually, I have this funny story to tell about this particular project that we're going to go over just now. It's called the um, Shell Game br uh, Necklace Bracelet. You can, it's a rope, so you can make it either a necklace or a bracelet. And one day, my mom and I were both sitting there in the living room watching TV at night, you know, beating away like we do. And she was, I, I said, oh, hey, what are you working on? That's really pretty. I really like the, what's, how that's coming out. And she's like, oh, I'm making a double spiral rope. And I was like, really? Let me take a look at that. And, and I made her give it to me. And I'm looking at her closer. I'm like, well, this is really cool, but this is not how you do a double spiral rope. <laughs> so she was actually doing it wrong, what she thought was a double spiral rope, and doing it wrong. And instead, it turned into this fabulous project. So it just goes to show, don't worry about mistakes, somet because sometimes those mistakes turns out to be diamonds. Um, and this one certainly has been. And so let's take a closer look at the project, and I'll show you how to make your double spiral wrong and make it look fabulous. This is what it work looks like. And uh, one of the reasons she was working with it is because we frequently will hear from people that they want to use bugle beads. They, they keep buying them, and then they're not really quite sure what to do with them. And bugles work up beautifully in a spiral rope. And look at how it kind of gives this shell effect to it. And that's why we named it Shell Game. Um, so this is actually a double spiral rope done wrong. And so those of you who have done spiral ropes before, this is going to be very easy for you to pick up. Uh, if you need a tutorial on how to do just a regular spiral rope or even how to do a double spiral rope the correct way, um, I will pop links up for both of those uh, videos because I do have those filmed. So I'm starting out here with a stopper bead and I'm going to pick up five of my size eight core beads. Uh, and core beads means that that's what's running down the center of center spine of um, you can't even see it in this particular project but if you kind of peer really close in here there's some bronze spine beads right in the center there they're really just something for us to uh, attach all of these loops to so there's our five spine beads now we're going to pick up five uh, size 11 beads for our loop and one bugle bead. Let me tell you here, these are the materials that you're going to need. You, you're going to use size 8s for your spine, size 11s for your loop, and a 6 millimeter uh, uh, bugle bead. A 6 millimeter is sometimes known as a size 3 bead, bugle bead also. So 6 millimeter, size 3. So you're picking up those beads, and then you're going to pass through all the beads in that spine, that center spine again, so all five of those. Okay, so that's our first loop. Now, without adding any more spine beads yet, we're going to add another loop, just the same. So we're adding five of the size 11s and one bugle bead. And then we're passing through those same five spine beads again, like so. Now if you were doing double spiral the proper way, you'd have one of these off to one side and one off to the, the, the other side. But because we're doing this basically the wrong way, we're going to we're going to push those off to the same side every time. Now we're going to add our second round here, which means that we now need to add a single spine bead. So I'm picking up one of the size eights, and then the beads of our next loop. So that means three of our size elevens, I'm sorry, five of our size elevens, and one bugle bead. We're bringing that all down to the piece here, because we're only then going to pass up through the top five spine beads, meaning we're leaving, dropping one below and we're passing through the one that we just added. Okay. When we tighten, you want to keep making sure that your this loop is sitting off to the same side. So we don't want all of a sudden this loop to be off this way. 
always needs to be off to the same side. I'm pushing mine to the right, but you can push them to the right, you can push them to the left, it doesn't matter. You just want to pick a direction and be consistent with it. Uh, so now that was my first loop out of this new spine bead. Now we're going to add a second loop the exact same way. So one, two, three, four, five, and a bugle. Passing through that same top five spine beads. So now we've got two loops out of that spine bead. You're going to forget at some point whether you have already done two loops or not. Like you're going to walk away, you know, and come back to your piece and go, now wait, do I need to add a second one here? What you can do is look at the top here. So if you look at the top, you can kind of see how many loops you have coming out of that top bead. And that will remind you whether you need to add a loop or whether you're ready to start adding another spine bead. And in this case, I'm ready to add another spine bead. So I'm going to just keep going here and adding a couple more rounds so that you can kind of see this start to fill in. Because some of the comments that I got um, from my original, oops, and the bugle, can't forget the bugle bead, that makes the whole shell thing going on, uh, from my original video is that they felt like I stopped too soon. They wanted to see the whole spiral kind of fill in a little bit more. So you're going to just hang out with me here while I while I do this. So you'll notice now that because I added a new spine bead on top, that means I'm only doing the fo top five spine beads. So just remember each time that you're just going to do the top five. So now I need a second loop out of that guy. One, two, three, four, five, and a bugle. And we're just passing through the top five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there we go. You can see how this is kind of starting to fill in on the back here as I'm pushing everything to the side. And what you're going to see as we, we keep going is it's going to start filling in underneath here also. So we've got our two loops out of the sp spine beads. We're going to pick up one new spine. Beads for the first loop. Okay, I've gone ahead and beaded ahead a little bit so that you didn't have to sit here and watch me do all this. And you can see that as we're pushing these off to the same side, how it starts curling around in front. And that means that when you go to grab those top five spine beads here, sometimes you kind of have to pry in here a little bit. Now this isn't too far down the, down the path, so I'm not having to do too much prying, but but you can kind of have to see how you kind of have to go, okay, one, two, three, four, and then kind of pry the loops apart to find number five to pass through to get your next loop in. Let's see here. My thread's kind of caught. There we go. Like so. Well, come off. There we go. So here's two loops then on this one. I'm ready to do my next one and add a new spine bead, and then we'll just be catching the top five. So you can see how this, as this goes around, it ends up covering all of these spine beads, and it all starts swirling in. And that's why you have to be very careful to keep pushing it off to the same side each time so that you get that beautiful swirl action going on. So when we come back, what I'm going to do is show you how to attach the clasp. It's easy. So now you have yourself a section of rope. Um, you certainly can, you know, make it a bracelet or you can make it a necklace length. And uh, we have kits available for both bracelet and necklace lengths or a combo of the both because it's nice to wear the um, matching sets sometimes. Uh, your clasp, if you use the clasp that's in your uh, kit, it will add about an inch of length to your rope. So take that into account when you're deciding your end points. Um, let me show you close up how you're actually going to attach that close, that clasp. That's what I'm trying to say, clasp. So here I am, Barbie's decided that this is the perfect length for her little Barbie bracelet. So we're come, with our thread coming out, that top spine bead, what you're going to do is you're going to pick up two uh, of the size 11 seed beads. I'm sorry, actually three of the size 11 seed beads. Half of your clasp and then another three of those size 11s. 
and this is for the um, the, the square part of, of your toggle clasp. We're going to do something slightly different on the bar side, just so you know. So then I picked up another three on this other uh, half of the clasp. And then we're going to pass down through one or two beads in the spine. It doesn't really matter. Somewhere around one or two. So that just created a little loop on top here for your clasp. What we need to do is reinforce that. And to reinforce it, it means we need to turn around and go back through those loop beads again. So the easiest way to do this uh, is actually to follow one of these loops that's coming out of this particular bead intersection where my thread's coming out. Let me tell you something. Um, the instinct here is going to be the easiest way to turn around and go back is to tie a knot here uh, and then turn around and go back up. The reason I don't suggest you do that is because we're going to be reinforcing this multiple times and so it's possible that you're going to block up holes by tying a knot right there. So I actually think that uh, going around one of these loops is a better option, but if you're you're more determined to do a knot, then go for it. You know, the worst that could happen is you have a, a hole blocked up and you might have to come up with an alternate thread path. So here, my thread is coming out between these two spine beads. I know that there's going to be a loop that's, com that's associated with that. So here's the loop that's coming out of that intersection. I'm going to follow those beads and pass my thread through all the beads of that loop. like so. We're going to follow down where it goes back into the spine and then we're going to pass up through all the spine beads from there and you'll probably have to do this in multiple passes. This is the kind of thing you want to do uh, when you've got really good lighting and you're not going to get interrupted so that you can kind of really just sit and concentrate on what you're doing. Okay, so there I've come up through all those beads now I can reinforce this pathway because look here where I've got a bunch of extra thread showing. So this is going to be a perfect opportunity for me to kind of tighten it by passing through and reinforcing. In this particular clasp, if you'll notice, the beads are actually passing through the hole of this clasp uh, freely. So we wouldn't necessarily have had to do the three on one side and three on the other. But different clasps have different hole sizes there. So sometimes you do and sometimes you don't, just so you know. Okay, so there we have passed through all of those again. And then we're going to do the same thing. So last time I had gone down two, let's go down, say, three this time, three or four, wherever my needle just kind of comes out. Let's see, wiggle, wiggle, there we go. And now I would do the same thing. So here my thread is coming out of this intersection. Here's a loop coming out of there right, and just pass through that loop, come back up, reinforce one last time through there, and then this time when you come down, if you like, what you can do is instead of going around a loop, is it's because that would be our last pass of uh, securing that clasp area, you could actually tie a knot. And let me kind of show you how that would happen. So we're, we're just going to catch the threads that are holding those that spine section together. What I want to make sure I do, don't do is catch any other threads. So it's just going to be the threads in that center spine. Pull down so I've got a little bit of a uh, loop left. Pass my needle through the loop. And then I want to kind of tighten this down nice and slow. Make sure that those, that knot tightens in between that intersection there so that we don't have any thread showing. And then I would probably move another bead away, tie another knot. In general, I like to tie two to three knots if I'm going to tie knots. So do the same thing uh, to tie another knot. And then this part of your clasp is done. Now, the second half of your clasp is going to be similar. And I'm just going to kind of show this to you here on this sample. Um, we need to make this elongated a little bit. And the reason is you need to be able to get this toggle bar up high enough through the, the uh, round part of your clasp so that it can attach. So that means we need a slightly longer piece of just seed beads here. Coming out of that main 
a spine bead there. We picked up, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six seed beads, attached the clasp, picked up two seed beads, and then passed back down through those same four so that you're just creating a single line here. Um, and then re going back and doing the reinforcement the same way. So it's very similar, it's just the numbers of beads that you're picking up is slightly different. I know that I'm not demonstrating that for you, but it is available, all the written instructions and diagrams are available in the written set of instructions that is a free PDF download on our website at jillwisemandesigns.com. Um, we also have kits available, three different colorways, and in the necklace or the bracelet or the necklace and bracelet combo. Um, and I think that's everything that I have to say. So I know you guys are gonna enjoy this one. I actually, when I was making up this sample, uh, I was having a lot of fun with it. I haven't made one in a really long time. And this is one of those very zen-like um, uh, beading projects because you don't have to think about it too much. And so you get into the rhythm and it's, so this is a good TV watching program. I really enjoyed making it and I hope you do too.